Welcome to the Mobile Workforce Podcast, where we sit down and have real conversations with business leaders that have been where you are. During these interviews, we'll dive into what it takes to improve systems and champion processes that maximize performance. Each week, our trailblazing guests share their experiences and understanding of the workforce to help inspire change, challenge our thinking, and share what it takes to successfully travel the road to profitability. Now here's our host, co-founder and chief evangelist of About Time and WorkMax, Mike Merrill. Hello and welcome back to the Mobile Workforce Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Merrill, and today we are excited to sit back down with Erica Carosi, who is a construction expert with the Strategies Group who is a construction manufacturing software and technology expert offering a wide variety of technology solutions and construction services. Erica and I spoke uh, last week and uh, talked about the top three things or steps that they look at in helping businesses like yours adopt new and improved technology solutions. So today we're going to finish out that conversation and dig more into what those other remaining steps are. So thanks again for joining us, Erica. Looking forward to another great conversation. Hello, I'm happy to be back. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, it's been so long. Has the weather changed since we last spoke? Um, no, not much. You know, it's still a little chilly, but the sun is shining, so that's a blessing. Oh, good. I think I think the sun is always shining in your world. You, you have a nice <laughs> smile. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. So uh, back to the conversation that we started last week. Um, let's talk about the next steps. Um, what, you know, maybe let's recap uh, quickly what, what we talked about last week, and then let's lead into step number four if we can. Okay. So um, we discussed the first step is, um, you know, the discovery and understanding their needs and their pain points and um, what they use now to process their information. And um, then we dive deep into understanding their motivation and their why on why they need new technology or why they feel they need it or what their pain points are. And then we've learned, um, we stopped with learning their must have features versus their nice to have features of the new technology. Awesome. Well, so then let, now that we've recapped those, what's, what's the fourth step? So the fourth step um, is having them. And I think we kind of touched on this on the last call, but under, I have them write down or tell me, and I write it down so that they see it when I send them an update, <laughs> a recap, what technology are you currently using? And I find that one to be so interesting because you think that we all know what we're using, right? They, but we don't like when they go in and they start to see that we're at number 11 and we're at 12 and we're at 13, hold on, we're using this, we're using Excel. We've got this for the financials we've got. They start to think, whoa, you know? So I think that really opens the eyes to see, again, that's a lot of work and you're paying subscriptions on every one of those. Are they integrated? There's so much that opens up when you start listing what your tech stack currently looks like. Yeah, and there's so many nuances to different solutions. I mean, there are different, different owners, different founders, different visions of how to do something. So uh, I commonly talk with companies that literally have three similar products that are used by different teams, maybe certain projects they use one, but then the same guy on another project the next day might be using another. I mean, that's just crazy to me, right? <laughs> You're right. I didn't even think of that, but actually I've, I've experienced that before too, where maybe three or two of the 12 that they put there almost do the same thing. So you start to think, do y'all know that these are pretty similar and that you're paying for subscriptions for three things that do the same thing, <laughs> but it, you know, it gets lost. Things get lost and business happens. It just, it just keeps happening. You know, it's going, it's going, it's going. And so they think, oh, we need to get this. And somebody says, oh, I have a good app or I know a new program or I got a great whiteboard that'll work. <laughs> you know? So it's like, well, yeah. where's this information? It's on the whiteboard. Well, how would I get to it? Well, it's in the system too, but where's that at? Oh, it's on this spreadsheet, but how do I get to that? Oh, but I don't have access to that sheet. Well, that's, that's, that express that sheet that they need access to. They don't have access to your whiteboard because they're remote. They don't have access to your Excel spreadsheet. So yeah, it ends up being chaos. Or did the cleaning crew on the weekend accidentally, literally wipe 
your, oh, your whiteboard server. They wipe the server. You know, I don't know how I would sleep if all of my important information was just on a whiteboard and I had to leave the office because I'm a bit of a control freak. Like that may stress me out bad. I would not sleep. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, Amen yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we look at their tech stack and, and it's very important um, to look at what you, you've already got um, because like you said, they may already have a so the solution that they're looking for. Um, sometimes people think that their system's broken, but it really just needed to be updated or assessed. Um, sometimes they have systems that can integrate with another and they didn't even know it, which we mentioned that last time. So, um, you know, assessing this and what you have is really about making sure um, that you're using what you have and that um, you don't have to re-implement, retrain and spend more money if we're going to keep that, but we don't really find too many times if you've got 12 solutions that we're keeping those, cause that's kind of pointless to come to us, right? Yeah, we had a survey that we conducted a couple of years ago and uh, there basically said every company at that point, and I think it's actually a higher number now, had between six to nine applications on their smart device. And I truly, I mean, I think that's probably almost doubled for a lot of companies now. So there is more to weed through to get to. And it's like, I have the same problem with my own personal iPhone. I probably have 70 apps on there and I probably use regularly like 15, you know? Yeah. That's I keep awesome. deleting. I'm like, I don't use it. Don't use it. Yeah. But I re-download them. If I, I'm like, I'll re-download it if I really think I need it. And, but yeah, I probably, I think I, now that's you're making me curious. Example. I'm going to count them. Yeah. I'm going to count them. No, you don't even yeah. have to count them. Just go into your settings and go to general and it'll tell you. Look, see, look at you. <laughs> no, because Still it'll tell you. Thing. It'll tell you definitely. But that's a really, really good example on comparing like software and what we were talking mm -hmm. about in our cell phones, right? Like yeah. we have so many apps that you end up not using and it's right. it's really a great right. comparison. Yeah. And you might have five that really do do the same thing, you know? Yes. So. You know, like those, um, <laughs> The photo touch up ones. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got a whole screen of those things. <laughs> and look, it still doesn't help. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, we digress. And that takes me into what my next thing I was going to say is like, okay. it's, in, when you, it's important, um, you know, understanding what you have and learning, learning from our mistakes. So like what we said about the cell phone, um, we have X software or X apps but we realize we're not even really utilizing these certain features. Um, and that's good to know for when you're looking into systems in the future, because again, like you said, you could have some that you've just, maybe at the time that you got that software, you didn't need certain features or functionality, but as you've grown and evolved, you did. And so you didn't even know that what you need currently, you probably, you may already have. Yeah, and I actually think, and I, I real it's, it's what I said earlier, and I really believe this. I think, they know it's important. I think it hits their priority list initially. I think they have, you know, they're, even if we always ask for the top three, we ask the top one, what are we going to solve for, for everybody? But, you know, we have probably three and then there's a longer list. And I would say nine out of 10 times that top 10 list looks great, is great, is what they want and need. But a lot of companies, they get to the top three on implementation and rollout and training and then when the onus becomes more on them to get the rest of those things dialed in, I just think they they don't have the time. They're, they're busy. They don't feel like they have the time. They don't reround and get back. And so it could be years before they even remember to think, oh, that's right. We were going to, you know, replace our, you know, paper things and our spreadsheets with this form piece of the solution or, and they just don't get back to it. And so it's, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, right? no, that is terrible. And I, but I, you know, I think it's important that they have a key person. I mean, again, having that team, mm -hmm. like we said earlier, everybody needs okay. to be on the same page. Um, and so you got to have somebody that's kind of the 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 taking the charge of the point person, of this, right? the point person, right? So that they are keeping it on track because it's so easy to to just get busy. And this this isn't like a very quick process when you're changing software or even doing research on it, you could go down a rabbit hole and feel like, okay, here we go. I just looked up and it's a year later. 
<laughs> you know, you really can get deep because there's so much out there and there's so much information. Um, again, that's, that's why I feel like working with a partner is really, really the best idea. Um, they have that expertise. They've got the practice every day of working and seeing what new and improved solutions are out there to fit your needs. And especially when you've got partners that are focused on a certain industry, right? Because we know what is going on, what um, help you understand what's working and what isn't in your industry. And, and Well, you're, you're a coach, right? Yeah. Like M- Michael, Michael Jordan had a shooting coach or Tiger Woods has a swing coach, right? That's right. So, Coach Erica. Yes. I, I like it. <laughs> I like it because I was terrible at sports. So I'll be the coach. <laughs> <laughs> but good at tech. Cool. Yes. Good at tech, terrible at sports. My kids well, took that good. from me. <laughs> I love it. So one of the things that we, the, a phrase that we use around here commonly, and I think it's just applicable in life and, and everything else. It's like, you know, taking out the garbage at home, right? If everybody takes the garbage out, inevitably someone's, not going to take the garbage out. So if everybody owns it, nobody owns it. That's a good it. one. I like that. I'm going to start using that for my son too. When he's okay. like, why do I always have to take the garbage That's out? It. I'll See? tell you why. I have some great Someone information from it. my friend, Mike. You know, you got to own it. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, it. I love that. Yes, 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 yes. That's it. And it doesn't mean that, you know, I do at my house, I take the garbage out. And so it doesn't mean my wife doesn't remind me or that I get upset when she does. Like, you know, nine out of 10 times when she says, did you take the garbage out? I'm like, yep, absolutely. Cause I already know I'm going right. to do that. Right. That's right. So I have a process in place to make sure that that always gets done. I and like I it. actually, honestly, I, I never forget to take it out, but that's awesome. If I'm out of town or okay, well now mm-hmm. sometimes it doesn't go out cause that's I true. owned it and I wasn't there. So that's right. if we look at this in a technology, you know, lens and say, you know, in our company, we need to have people that have stewardship over That's this right. thing. So in the field, your foreman or your site super or or somebody who's managing labor and production and the project, they need to be responsible to make sure that the data that needs to go in those applications is being collected. So that the, the business back at the office has that, that the cloud is being fed with that real-time data. And otherwise, it's you know, paper and spreadsheets and once a week there's a data dump and it's three weeks, like you said, later before anything meaningful actually hits where you can make a decision off of it. And so by bringing that back to the single source of truth, which you mentioned, having that single place where everything originates is, I mean, that's the answer right there. Like make the guy accountable that's actually doing the widget or turning the, the, the nut or doing the weld or pouring the concrete. They know better than anybody when and what. So give them a great tool to collect it and you're going to enjoy the benefits. Yes, absolutely. And you know, when we, um, when we do our implementations, which is actually our fifth step, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead here, but um, the fifth step is, you know, evaluating the time frame and the implementation process. And while you're working with a partner, we're working with you to pick or assign those key people that we will be interacting with, that we're going to make sure that they're being held accountable. And then they in turn, or they're, they're, they're passing that on to their team by having accountability and having milestones that they have to meet when it comes to training um, and implementation. So that, you know, We work with you to make sure that we're picking your subject matter experts that are going to be dedicated. There's a project manager that we, you know, who in your team is going to be the project manager, the point person that we're going to go to, right? That's what you're saying pretty much, right? Yeah. And I think, I don't know if it's the same for you, but I think this is good for the listeners to hear uh, what we have found. And I'll tell you that we, we put in a new phone system like three years ago and we're actually changing to a new one again. Uh, back to the point, right? The one we had wasn't broken, but we found something a little more efficient, a little better integrated. We're actually going to save on cost. Um, we've had some challenges with the performance of the existing tools, so we're looking to replace it. But um, when we when we got this last phone system, and I won't mention names, but we had they gave us homework, they gave us some information to review, they gave us things to fill out and submit. And we got there to our meeting and back to everybody owns it. Nobody owns it. 
we had some of the information filled out that we, that we did as we finished up the first meeting, but nobody really was held accountable by themselves or by whoever to complete the rest of that. So we get on the call and the project manager with this phone system company said, it doesn't look like you guys were able to complete the information that we need. We're going to have to reschedule this call. Mm-hmm. And we're like, uh-huh. no, we need our system in place. We we're, we have a deadline here. And he goes, it didn't, it didn't seem like you guys were worried about the deadline because you didn't do what we need. And this, I can't move forward without all this information. And some of it wasn't something that we could just answer right there. So he said, I'm sorry, we're, we're going to have to reschedule. And it was like, Oh, oh crap. We were yeah. like, Y'all we felt trouble. ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I, I'm a part owner in this business. Why, you know, but I felt like I was being scolded a little bit and he was right. Yes. And I he thought, was. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is what yes. we, we need to be doing more with some of our customers on new implementations. We need to do a better job of giving them homework. I think where the, where the, fail point was maybe this project manager of the phone system company didn't follow up enough with, he didn't necessarily assign a point person. I mean, we did it by committee. And so, you know, he could have helped advise us to choose someone to say, I will get this completed by such and such a date. And then we'll be ready for this call. We didn't have that, but I learned from that experience that, okay, his approach is totally correct. And he's right. Like we, we messed up where we really weren't ready. We were expecting them to, to carry all the weight. That's right. And he needed us to carry some for That's us right. to be successful. So, yeah, you have, yeah. You know, when we, when we work with our um, prospects who become customers, but even in the prospect um, phase, it, it's a partnership and there's going to be um, expectations um, on, for the prospect that there's information they have to provide or fill out. Um, they have to have someone running the project. Um, they have that. We have to have them assign that decision maker that in the end, they're making sure they're taking note of what the team wants um, by still driving forward the needs of the company, our point person. But you have to put in some time and commitment because it's a big deal. And for what we're doing on our side, whether it be showing you the product or really trying to discover what your pains are, we're putting, we're investing our time into it. Right. So, um, we need you to invest your time as well, because at the end of the day, it's going to benefit you. We're going to do our best to help you by keeping it, you know, organized. Who's our point person. Who's the go-to person for this, but otherwise everybody's got to, you got to do your homework, Mike. Right, right, right. (laughs) Yeah. And we only all want, I mean, as, as technology providers and solution providers, we only all want all of the implementations to be successful. We want everybody to love what they have. So we're going to try really hard to try to help them be successful Absolutely. to the very best of our ability, right? Absolutely. Software just, is just the tool used to execute on the plan. Sometimes the plan's equally as important as the system that you're going to use, right? I, I 100% agree with that. The plan, the system, your partner, who you're working with is very, very important. The implementation, how they're going to train your team. And then also on their side, how your team, are they coachable? Are they open to this process? Has everybody been communicated that this is a big deal? We're, we're putting a big investment on in time um, of searching for a product. But then once we've made our decision, it's a big investment financially, but it's a big investment in our people. So how committed on that side on the prospect side or the client side as well. So there's a lot of commitment expectations on both sides. So everybody's got to carry their weight, but that's my funnest part of the entire job. I don't like to be called sales because I'm really, again, like I mentioned to you, I have not gone and had anybody that I met on the street say, Oh yeah, I need you. They typically are already (laughs) coming. (laughs) So it's not like I'm out there selling like cookies or something, right? Right. right. I right. love what I do because they're coming to us. They know they have a need. And then I can help like dig into it like a investigator and find these solutions and figure out what I know that can help them. And what I don't know, I love to try to learn to, to help them, right? Because people come to us and 
maybe they didn't even need an ERP. And I've been able to get them on like a WorkMax or one of our other ISVs. And um, I had the most beautiful email come to me where she said, you know, you did not let us down. You know, when we told you that we've worked with these other partners and they said they couldn't find anything for us, you promised me you wouldn't do that. And when Acumatica wasn't the fit, instead of running off, you got us with the best like software and it had nothing to do with what I sell. But that's what I love. I love to help people and I love to find solutions to make their day better so they can go um, to that soccer game with their kids because they're not trying to find go through 18 different Excels or a whiteboard to figure out what's happening the next day. They run a report, they're done. They can get it from their phone now with our mobile app and um, you know check their forecast or whatever for their job while they're sitting at the soccer game. That's what I like. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I, yeah we, we love that too. And I think you mentioned something else I, I don't want to gloss over. You said, are you coachable? And I think that's a great question for the listeners to be introspective on and say, are we, not me as an owner or me as a project manager, me as a foreman or a CFO or whatever, are we as a company coachable? Are we teachable? And, and, and if they are, then when they find a great partner, there's probably a lot better opportunity for them to be successful, which is, you know, like I said, we all want to help these customers be successful, but there is you know, there is a requirement for more than just one set of hands on that rope that you're pulling in the tug of war, you know? That's right. It's a, it's a major commitment for everybody. And um, I what I love about our team so much is whenever we close a deal, that is not the end of the road for them, right? They work with us, then they go to our consultant implementation training. Then we have a customer success uh, team that we are always there with them as they're evolving, looking for new solutions. So be coachable, make it fun because it's not a fun situation. <laughs> always. <laughs> it's not always, I don't want those rose colored glasses to be like, oh yeah, this is going to be great. You know, no, it's a lot. It's a lot that goes into it. So um, get ready for the ride. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's stressful. These, these projects are not easy and they won't, they won't, you know, complete themselves, right? Just like building a building it takes a lot of planning and work to execute on it. And I think software solutions and systems are very similar. You got to start with the footing and the foundation, and you've got to have rebar to strengthen uh, this building, this project that you're putting together so it doesn't fall apart. And we want those underpinnings in a software implementation where, okay, we've got steps, we've got processes, we're going to go about this methodically so that when the wind comes and the rain comes and beats down on the building, it's going to stand and you're going to be successful. And, um, you know, I, I, I just appreciate getting to know you more, Erica, and Thank more you. about your organization because we, we know Strategies Group's been around a long time. We've worked with you for almost two decades and lots of customers that we have in common and, and future customers that we hope to get. But most of all, we appreciate what you do for our community because again, like you said, you want you want people to make it to the soccer game. You want them to have their reports on their cell phone at the drive-through, you know, picking up dinner on the way home or not having to sit in an office and crunch numbers until, you know, after dinner on Friday night. That's right. That's right. Amen. I, I love that. That's that's really that's exactly the the point that we're making here, right? It's it's powerful. Technology is powerful. I love technology, and um, I just think that it really can improve our lives. And it can be scary, and it can be overwhelming. But people just embrace it. Don't be afraid of technology. I love that. That's a that's a great one to end on. So don't be afraid to, of technology. Is what Erica yes. says. I, don't be I afraid of it. technology. And remember, this is my fun little quote that I like to say. Okay. Adapting and improving technologies is the reason that we don't need to unplug our phone line just to plug into a modem anymore. Mm. <laughs> Can you imagine if right now we're trying to do the ERP talk and our ISVs and we all have to go plug into a modem? Yeah. <laughs> so let's embrace it yeah. and love it. Right now right. we're in the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Erica. This has thank been a you. delight to have you on. And I know our listeners are going to enjoy the advice and wisdom that you shared. So you're thank awesome. you. Thanks for having us. And I'm really uh, excited that we've worked so long with you guys. I love working with WorkMax. So thank you. 
Thank you. And we'll, we'll do this again down the road. And I can't wait to see you out there somewhere at, at some of these fun events. So. Thank you. You too. Take care. Have fun at Summit. All right. Take care. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for joining us today on the Mobile Workforce Podcast, sponsored by About Time Technologies and WorkMax. If you liked the conversation we had today or were able to learn anything new or helpful, please make sure to follow us on our WorkMax page on LinkedIn and on Instagram at WorkMax underscore. And subscribe to the show on iTunes or your preferred podcast platform so you will never miss another insightful episode. Also, if you enjoyed the podcast, please leave us a five-star rating and review and share the show with your friends and colleagues. Your support means the world to us and will allow us to continue providing impactful information with others looking to improve their results in their business and in turn, their life.